Hey guys, welcome to another preview season video for the Magic the Gathering upcoming set Dominaria. Today is April 8th. We've got a couple cards to get to, um, but I wanted to let you know that we do have other uh, episodes and other videos planned this, for this week since the preview season is almost coming to a close and uh, pre-release is right around the corner. Uh, we want to make sure that you guys are all set with your um, best instance to look out for, removal, pump spells, things like that. We also want to kind of go into different archetypes. So you're going to see a couple extra videos this week. Keep an eye on the actual channel itself, youtube.com slash 72 DPI online. Make sure you get subscribed. Leave us a comment be below of what you want to see, what you want to build when you get to your pre-release and things like that. So with that, let's go ahead and get into our cards here. The first cards set up is our black set. Uh, we've only got a few cards here, but the first one is a huge callback to when I played Magic um, way back in Tempest and Stronghold and Mirage. This is Dreadshade. It's three black for a 3-3 three, three shade at rare, and it's got the pump ability of paying one black, and it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, this card is... Probably this ability rather is one of those abilities that I that I played with quite a bit when I was uh, first learning magic, um, only because I had that wide-eyed moment where I'm like, oh my god, I can make this as big as I want, as quickly as I want, whenever I want. Okay, rock on, let's do this. Um, and you know, especially for it to be in black, you know, it's one of those you know, threat of activation is is a very strong thing. Um, especially since black has such so much access to removal you know you've got different different ways to deal with creatures on the battlefield dealing with creature or dealing with uh, cards in hand um, it, it just this gives you another option to play with um, it definitely can slow down your opponent since it's three black you know it's gonna go into a mono black deck um, in sealed obviously you're gonna be playing this in black um, you're not, it's probably not gonna be a splashable or it's not even worth splashing for just because of the ability um, you know so if you open this it's definitely gonna put you into into black in your sealed in your draft uh, in your draft um, uh, pods. The only thing that's kind of holding this card back is it doesn't have any type of like evasion or combat, you know, abilities or anything like that. It's just a straight up beater. Um, if you can clear the way, great. And black does that really well. So let's hope that this that when you open this up, you're also getting some removal spells along the way. Uh, next up, we have the Lich King. This is a uh, two generic, two black for a legendary zombie knight at rare. Uh, looks like he is a four five. Uh, with Menace. Now he has Kicker for 6 mana, so it's 1 black and 5 generic. If he enters the battlefield and was kicked, you create 8 2-2 two, two zombie uh, cre uh, night creature tokens with Menace. Now that's a huge, huge plus for this card. That Menace ability on the actual creature itself and the zombie tokens is one of the strongest abilities that I've seen on one of these legendary creatures. Um, you know, getting a 4-5 with Menace for 4 mana is above the curve. Um, you know, most Menace creatures have a lower defense, which makes them a little bit susceptible to being, you know, being blocked by two creatures. This Lich King, on the other hand, um, having that 5 toughness really kind of, it, it really kind of sets it up, you know, up one more notch. Because in some cases, you're definitely going to get two creatures for this one. In some, you know, ca corner cases, you may get a third creature. Um... And that just to meet that five toughness. Um, so if you've got a way to interact with the uh, that third creature, like to save your Lich King, you know that's a that's a huge win to you. Um, getting to ten mana for the additional, you know what, sixteen power and toughness, that's definitely game ending uh, for sure. The Menace ability kind of throws it over the top, where people are just going to end up scooping after you play this. Um, <clears throat> the majority of the time. So if you open either either one of these two cards, if you open them up in your sealed pool, in your draft pool, this is definitely going to pull you into that color. Obviously, they're not splashable, um, especially if, uh, you know, like with the Lich King, you could probably splash it and not plan on kick, you know, using the kicker cost. Um, you know, two, two black isn't that difficult to get to. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's a black card that, you know, makes a ton of zombies and it's going to win games. Uh, the next card, uh, I've got a translation here for you. Uh, it's going to be a rare uh, saga. Uh, it costs black, black with two generic. It's called Rite of Belzalak. 
can't pronounce that. Belzalock, let's just call him that, Mr. B. Uh, it's The two first two lore counters are exactly the same. It's create two zero one black cleric creature tokens. The third ability, uh, the third lore counter, you're going to create a 6-6 six, six black demon creature that has flying, trample, and at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice another creature if you don't. This creature deals you six damage. So, uh, you got yourself a little bit of Lord of the Pit there. Um, obviously, the your opponent's going to see it coming. They've got two turns to deal with it, um, or you know, really they've got two turns to deal with the zero one creatures um, because that you know those those are going to obviously be you know fodder to feed the Lord. So that's that's something that you have to you know be very cautious of when you're playing this card is how are you going to not only protect your six six but more importantly protect your o ones because if you don't have anything to sacrifice this thing's going to start dealing you damage um and unfortunately it's during your upkeep and that's before you actually get to attack with it so this thing will kill you before you get a chance to kill your opponent if they control your zero ones so be very very cautious when you're playing this make sure you have a very low curve um, and you've got ways to either protect your things or create more uh, creatures that are sacrificable or, in fact, just outright win the game. Uh, the 6-6 six, six, um, in the air is fantastic if they don't have a way to block it. But remember, you're getting, you're getting dealt 6 and you can't sacrifice uh, that demon to itself. It has to be another card. So not too bad. Again, rare cards, so you're not going to get too many in your draft and sealed, but it will pull you into those colors. Um, and it's definitely a game winner if you can uh, match it up and build around it. Uh, next up, we've got blue. Um, yeah, let's just call this the human rogue. I'm not, I'm not even going to, to go into it. This is a 1-3. This is the blue legendary uncommon human rogue. It costs one blue, one generic. Uh, and this is actually kind of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to to building around this creature only because in, if you listen to the last video we talked about um we we it was hilarious because we literally talked about this saying i don't think creatures you know wizards and i didn't say rogues but you know the wizards and the lo and the humans with the lower power and lower toughness are really going to do a lot of attacking this thing on the other hand this this creature is going to allow that to happen creatures you control ability says creatures you control with the power or toughness one or less can't be blocked so you're looking at unblockable wizards rogues humans you know it pays to play these lower cost creatures so you could theoretically build this um this deck around this fugitive and really kind of go to town with it and you know it's uncommon, so it's likely that you'll see one in your draft, maybe more. Um, so, and it doesn't—it's not pigeonholed to you know humans or rogues or wizards. It's all creatures you control. So it makes anything that has the power or toughness of one that much stronger. Um, obviously, if you you know augment those creatures, like putting auras or enchantments or um, uh, equipment on them to change that, then they lose that ability. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, unblockable is unblockable, right? So it is, it is what it is. I, I enjoy it. I'm glad it's an uncommon, um, you know, I was kind of sad when wizards announced that they were going to start lowering the ability, lowering the amount of unblockableness that's in sets. So this is, this is kind of fun to see. I, I really like uh, building around this. So uh, next up, we have Academy Journey Mage. It's uh, four generic, one blue for a three-two human wizard at common. This spell costs one less to cast if you control a wizard. Uh, this does not stack, so it's either going to cost you five or four, depending on if you control a wizard. Um, and then when it enters the battlefield, you return target creature an opponent controls to its owner's hand. So it's 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 really expensive is what it is even with the cost reduction with the wizard clause in there it's still it's still expensive for what you're paying right so on turn five you're playing a three two that bounces something that's that's okay um in limited you'll see it played a little bit more um, because those games tend to run a little bit longer the creature's just not powerful enough it's not it doesn't have you know if it was a two three or maybe a three four then you then you're talking a little bit better um, but it just it, it doesn't really do much past the bouncing ability um, uh, you know I, I, there really, really isn't much more to say about it so 
Um, next up, we have another saga. This is the Antiquities War. Uh, it's three generic, one blue. The first two lore counters are the same, and this is coming up quite a bit, actually. And I, I'm kind of saddened by this. Uh, the same two lore counters are happening for first one and the second one. Uh, I don't know. I feel it's. I feel like there's there's some wasted space here. But anyway, <clears throat> so looking at so the first two lore counters, you're gonna get look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, excuse me, in a random order. Excuse me, in a random order. Um, not too shabby, right? You get to dig five deep, pick an artifact card from among them. So if you're you know, obviously you're only going to run this if, you know, you've got artifacts in your deck. There's no sense in doing it otherwise. But the the third ability is artifacts you control become artifact creatures with the base power and toughness of 5-5 five, five until end of turn. Um, we see this from time to time come up. Um, like, uh, with the, uh, the ensnaring soul, uh, was it ensnaring soul or in soul? I can't remember. Was it the one with the giant scissors? Um, or the insole, insole artifact or whatever. Anyway, the, we see this come up from time to time. Uh, this is a terrible idea in draft. If you open this card, we talked about a couple of them yesterday. This is a, this is a bulk rare at best. <clears throat> but it's not going to be worth your time. Even you, know, this, this card makes you play bad cards. And that's the one thing you need to look at in your deck is... You know, when I'm building a deck, do I do all my cards have a purpose, or if I am I putting cards in here to make this second card better, right? So if you're playing this saga, you have to play, you know, a set of artifacts that <coughs> that that make it better. So what if you whiff both times? You're not going to be able to you know, come back from that and you're, you just spent your fourth turn doing nothing. So the other downfall to this card is the, uh, the till end of turn, right? You get five, five still in turn. So the, you could have this really awesome nut draw where you have, you know, four artifacts on the battlefield and you're like, you've got your, you've got your 20 damage, but they have like some type of fog or they have some way to block it or they have like a bounce spell or something like, you know what I mean? Or they've got some way to interact with it, you know? You took your fourth turn to do nothing, and then you waited two turns to get some five five. Like it's just the setup is just way too much. So, I got one last blue card. This was actually kind of fun. I look forward to playing with it. This is Arcane Flight. One blue for an aura at common. You enchant a creature, and it gets plus one plus one and flying. That's it. I know we, uh, especially in the last episode, we talked a lot about powerful spells powerful creatures but they don't have any evasion uh kind of like the shade we just talked about right blue black if you could throw this on that shade now you've got a pumpable flyer that's a four four for four mana that's that's a force to be read that is a game ending card i don't care you know a lot of times you'll hear people say don't play don't play auras you're just asking yourself to get two for one right and Part of me is like, you know, if that aura gives my creature flying, that makes a mediocre creature better. That makes a better creature fantastic, and that usually that fantastic creature ends games. So yeah, they're gonna use the removal spell, whether they ha whether it had the aura on it or not, because it's a game ending card. So I, this is one of those one of those instances where I would say, go ahead and play it. It's at common, so you're gonna see them. Um, the question is not do I do I play it. The question is how many do I play. Um, I think you limit it to at least to three. I think any more than three, and you're going to be you know you're going to have one on the battlefield and one in your hand. And you're like, well, I really don't want to play this on the same creature. That's a terrible idea. Um, and then you'll die with this card in your hand. So I think three is probably the magical number. Um, two is probably more conservative. Uh, so. So be cautious, be cautious. Uh, next up, we have our only white card of the weekend, and that's Blessed Light. It is uh, four generic and one white. Instant speed, exile target creature or enchantment. And there's really not much more to talk about. It's, this, is a, this is a card that you want to be careful of. Um, 
because it is at common, and if your opponent's playing white, guaranteed they're playing this card, right? So just be cautious when they've got five mana up that you don't do something stupid, right? Like put Arcane Flight on your best creature and attack in. You put Arcane Flight on your second best creature and then attack in and then let them choose. <laughs> so um, just be cautious. Uh, so that's Blessed Light. Uh, next up we have Marwyn the nurturer this card is actually kind of fun and the green mage in me is really kind of just like wow this is this is a really sweet card i'm i'm kind of thinking about building an elf deck again uh haven't done that and got over over a decade um but uh she is a elf druid at rare she's a one one for three mana that's two generic and one green whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control put a plus one plus one counter on the nurturer and then she gets the added ability in case she needed it. Add a amount of green mana equal to uh, Marwyn's power. So, um, I mean, it's it's a mana elf at three mana by itself, which I know is bad. But you're not playing this if you're not playing elves. So, obviously, it's going to grow. Um, the question the question is how fast is it how fast is it going to grow because we've seen cards like this before with like Geyer Sage um, where you, you've got these different abilities that let you make the creature bigger and you know this one is whenever an elf right so this one's strictly better than than the sage but at the end of the day. This is a 1-1 one, one on turn 3, and the Sage was a 1-2 one, on turn 2. So you're already a step behind. Um, the The benefit, though, that this has is it's whenever another elf enters the battlefield. Um, so you don't have to cast it. It just has to be created. Um, that's not a, you know, that's not a clause like, you know it's 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 a it's a real thing um so spells will bring elves you know if you can cast spells that bring elves into play um you know it's not a cast it's not a casting clause right you can bring it from the graveyard graveyard shenanigans are a real thing especially in black and uh black and green so there's different there's different ways to manipulate this so at the end of the day you know Geyer sage was a bulk rare uh back in the uh when was that um what's that is that return to ravnica Wow, that's been a long time ago. Yeah, it's Return of Ravnica. Um, I think that was in like Gate Crash or something like that. Anyway, it's been a while, and this is probably going to fall in the same suit. Uh, but again, you know, Commander Elf deck, you know, they're they're always looking for you know mana dorks and stuff like that. Uh, next up, we've got our land cycles, and uh, one one of our rare lands uh, is Cabal Stronghold. Uh, this taps to add one colorless mana, and you can tap three mana and tap it and add a, a black mana for each basic swamp you control. Um, so this has got some corner case scenarios where it could be good. Um, it's frustrating because it's only basic swamps. Um, so there was a real, there was an opportunity here because of like the cycle lands um, where those are those are named uh, name swamp mountains and things like that, even though they're duels. Um, but we, it was, I was sad because of the ba the terminology with basic. Um, three and tap is a little bit strong to is is a little bit strong. Um, I mean, it's nice because at the, it, once you get into the later game, um, this will help ramp you a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not. You know, it's 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 fine. It's fine. If you're in black, you'll play it. It taps for colorless, which is great. Uh, most cards like this won't, you know, won't tap for colorless. They won't do anything unless you're using their activate ability. Um, and then we got our lands, the land cycle from Innistrad, which is great. This these cards have not seen reprints minus uh, I think um, the chapel saw a reprint in one of the commander sets, I believe. Yeah, I think that I think that's about it. There hasn't been much reprints, and the whole cycle hasn't been reprinted. So these still carry a pretty hefty tag, sitting right around between. I think uh, the lowest one was five dollars, and the highest one was uh, Sulfur Falls at uh, just sitting right around nine dollars. So you've got Hinder um, Hinderland Harbor. Um, this uh, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest or a island, and then it's got the new terminology on there, which I absolutely despise. 
I can't. I cannot believe they removed mana pool from these cards. It's so frustrating. It just looks. It looks so weird to me. Uh, but anyway, the, you know, you've got the green blue. Uh, then you got cliff lot, cliff top retreats, uh, which is the uh, mountain plains card uh, land, which taps for red or white. And then fast forward here, you've got woodland cemetery, which is the swamp forest version for tapping for black or green. Uh, isolated isolated ch uh, chapel which uh, is the Plains and Swamp version, adding white and black mana. And then Sulphur Falls, the most expensive, most sought-after one, uh, is your uh, island and mountain tapping for blue or red. Um, so I'm excited that these are coming back. Um, I feel like uh, if they really wanted to do you know, the, the uh, uh, Stronghold Justice, they would have given us something that uh, uh, was, you know, beneficial to it but since they added in the basic swamp clause then it really doesn't make much sense um so i'm glad these were the choice you know the the choice that they made um, rather than trying to shoehorn some some type of uh uh um uh new uh dual land in our in our face so this is this is a nice callback i uh, really do appreciate it all right guys so that is all of the cards for this past weekend. I really do appreciate you watching. Make sure you get subscribed. Leave a comment below what cards you're excited about. Like I said at the top of the show, I want to hear about what decks you're planning on brewing and uh, drafting when it comes to your pre-release. And uh, let me know what types of things you want us to cover uh, for episodes coming up this week. You know, we, I want to do an episode about uh, our uh, removal spells and things like that. So that prepares you for your pre-release. But what about like creatures and what types of, you know, uh, synergies and things like that? What types of uh, shows would you like to see and videos would you like to see there? Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know. Uh, you can catch the manager and we'll be talking more about these cards tomorrow and every Monday evening on twitch.tv slash 72 dpi online really do appreciate you guys watching thanks again and we will see you guys in the next video have a good night